next talk. Let me share my screen. So I'll be talking about spectral domain OCT versus swept source OCT. Uh, we'll touch on, touch on some of the facts and misconceptions about swept source versus spectral domain technology. So optical coherence tomography is a technique for obtaining subsurface images of translucent or opaque materials at a resolution that is equivalent to a low power microscope. OCT has become a standard of care in ophthalmology, as you can see in all the previous talks, uh, whether it's cornea or retina or glaucoma, providing real-time information to diagnose disease, evaluate progression, and also to assess response to therapy, which helps us to understand more about disease pathogenesis and in turn enable the creation of new novel therapies. So this is the interesting image on the right side, which shows the first in vivo image of the retina at 15 micro axial resolution, uh, which was performed at the MIT in 1993. So Dr. Ong has uh, also touched a bit on this, uh, and I just like to emphasize that OCT has actually undergone a lot of improvements in the past three decades. The first uh, time domain OCTs in the 1990s, they were only able to manage 100 scans per second and 10 microns of axial resolution. And only in the early 2000s, with the introduction of the Stratus OCT3, that the imaging modality OCT started to gain more traction. Fast forward to today, we have four real domain OCTs, which are the spectral domain and the swept source OCT. Both are now capable of 1,000 times the scan speed at much higher axial resolution than the original time domain OCTs. In terms of the technical parameters of interest, there are some differences between the two. And the main difference is in the wavelength that's employed. 850 nanometers in spectral domain and a longer 1050 nanometers in swept source. The imaging depth is slightly longer for swept source and there is also less sensitivity decay, uh, which we know more commonly as sensitivity roll off compared to spectral domain. Scan speeds are actually similar between the two and currently uh, available, commercially available machines can achieve 100,000 scans per second for both technologies. The axial resolution is actually higher for spectral domain at 5 microns compared to 8 microns in sweat source. In terms of cost, sweat source is still much more costly than spectral domain. Now that we have an idea of the technical differences, the critical question is whether sweat source offers diagnostically relevant advantages relative to spectral domain. And we'll answer this question today by looking at the clinical differences between the two and also addressing some misconceptions. So myth number one is that sweat source is faster than spectral domain. And although spectral domain may have started out slower at 25,000 scans per second, they have since caught up with sweat source and now both can perform 100,000 scans per second. The patient experience is great for both in less than a second to obtain a scan of the macula. For OCT and geography, the experience was actually better with the spectral domain, taking about 10 seconds compared to almost 50 seconds with the swept source instrument. Myth number two, spectral domain is not a good tool for assessing the choroid. Spectral, uh, sorry, swept source by virtue of the longer wavelength has a natural advantage for imaging below the retinal pigment epithelium. But with enhanced depth imaging or EDI using spectral domain, is also a great way of visualizing the choroid. So in this study, the authors compared spectral domain with EDI versus sweat source OCT, and they found that both modalities were able to image the choreal scleral boundary in more than 90% of the eyes, with the sweat source performing slightly better in terms of the sharpness of choroidal structures. But the interdigitation zone was clearly visualized with both instruments. These are the representative scans with the EDI ST OCT and the sweat source OCT. You can see that the choroid as well as the choreal scleral boundaries are well visualized with both modalities. These are the important structures that we look at on a day to day basis for disease diagnosis and monitoring treatment response. And these can be visualized equally well with both instruments. 
Myth number three, sweat source is better for visualizing the vitreous. The ability to visualize the vitreous is a function of the wavelength of light used. So in this study, the authors compared two wavelengths, essentially spectral domain versus sweat source wavelengths in terms of their ability to image the vitreous and the vitreous retinal interface. So these are images which show a decreased ability to visualize vitreous retinal adhesion with uh, addition of EDI. And use of longer wavelength OCT, vitreous retinal adhesion was clearest with the 870 nanometers without the EDI. So here, SDOCT appears to have the clear advantage. Although with some sweat source OCT devices, there is uh, software enabled and enhanced vitreous visualization mode to improve contrast of the vitreous. Myth number four, sweat source OCT is better for glaucoma assessment. In this study, spectral domain was compared with sweat source for evaluating the macular inner retinal layers for glaucoma diagnosis. And the authors actually found that spectral domain was potentially superior to sweat source in detecting GCI PR thinning in the outer temporal zone where glaucometers damage predominantly occurs. This was attributed to the higher X-ray resolution, which we talked about in the past slides, uh, of SDOCT, which enables the more accurate segmentation of inner retinal layers, thereby improving the detectability of thinner retinal layers. Myth number five, sweat source is better for eyes with hazy media. The longer wavelength of sweat source does improve penetration through dense ocular media, as I think most of us would have found in our clinical practice. And I also found it useful to image patients with dense cataracts using sweat source compared to the spectral domain. Another advantage of sweat source I found was in the visualization of the macula in gas field eyes. So in this study, the eyes were imaged after macular hole surgery with gas tamponade. And a clear benefit of sweat source can be seen in the first three days of the surgery, where a significantly greater proportion of eyes where visualization of the macula could be performed using the sweat source compared to spectral domain. But by day seven, this uh, difference has diminished. These are the representative images. On top is a pre-op scan of the mac hole, macular hole followed by volume and line scans taken with the spectral domain and the sweat source respectively, which shows better visualization of the uh, macular structures using sweat source. On the right are images from two of my patients, and I found that I can get a, quite a good look at the fovea on post-op day one using sweat source OCT most of the time, and uh, less often with spectral domain, where I often get uh, uh, grainy images instead. Myth number six, sweat source OCT can capture wider scans than spectral domain. And we have discussed previously that uh, technical differences between spectral domain and sweat source, these are not limiting factors for scan width. So both instruments are actually capable of capturing wide scans. Commercially available OCTs can now scan up to 12 millimeters. I think this has become um, the standard. While the Plex Elite sweat source OCT can even uh, capture up to 16 millimeters. Myth number seven, high myotes can only be imaged with sweat source OCT. Sweat source OCT with the greater scan depth and lower sensitivity roll off with that does have certain advantages for imaging very high myopes. I have also found the sweat source to be more useful in patients with deep posterior cephaloma when I want to have a broad view of pathology in relation to the posterior cephaloma walls, such as in the images shown on the left side here. I also find sweat source OCT to be useful in patients with macular hole retinal detachment because with the greater scan depth, it's easier uh, to search for the macular hole in detached retina. On the other hand, I prefer to image localized pathology like myopic CMV and foveal skysis using spectral domain OCT because of the higher axial resolution, which makes it easier to look for progression as well as response to treatment. Images on the right are from spectral domain OCT in a 29 millimeters eye, and it's good enough to look at uh, the area of interest. There are also other practical considerations before we decide uh, which is better. And the first is cost. And for now, sweat, uh, sweat source 
OCTs are still much more expensive than spectral domain. Normative data with spectral domain is also much better established compared to source. So the comparability of longitudinal data is a very important factor to consider when you switch imaging modalities, especially for predominantly glaucoma and retina-based practices. And lastly, your patient profiles will determine whether sweat source will actually be a, a useful addition to your imaging armamentarium. And as we have uh, mentioned in high myopes, patients with dense media opacity, uh, as well as corridor pathology, if majority of the patients uh, are of this profile, then you will definitely uh, benefit from having a sweat source OCT in your practice. So in conclusion, while I think that sweat source does confer some benefits of a spectral domain, the clinical benefits may still not be uh, justified in swapping out your spectral domain for the sweat source OCT. The incremental diagnostic utility is perhaps not there yet for glaucoma assessment, visualizing the vitreous or assessment of the retinal vasculature. But as both technologies continue to improve and mature, we may see a greater differentiation between the two for specific clinical situations in the future. So sweat source and spectral domain both can be useful in your daily clinical practice. For now, I do believe that spectral domain will continue to be a cornerstone in our day-to-day -day clinical practice. Thank you very much.